everyone, today I'm going to be talking about how to select the gear in your new Tesla Model 3. A lot of people have been concerned that Tesla has removed the stalks and that you're no longer able to select drive or reverse using the stalks, so you have to do it via the screen. This has caused a lot of concern because some critics have said, oh, how do you drive the car if your screen no longer works? But I'm going to show you that it is still possible to select your gears if your screen for some reason is no longer working, whether you've cracked it or Okay, now that we've parked, I want to show you guys where we've parked. So, I've parked head in, which means that other cars can park in front of me. I'm supposed to reverse out. Obviously, there's a car in front of me, so I'm curious to see what the auto uh, gear selector is going to do. But let me show you traditionally how you would shift into gear. So, you would step on the brake, just like all the other Teslas. Previously, you would use the stalk, which doesn't exist in this car, which this car has gotten a lot of flack for. I have not missed the stalk. I actually enjoy having everything on the... On the steering wheel as well as the screen so you would step on the brake and then this left side would appear on the screen you swap up to engage drive which means you can move forward just like this and then if you want to engage reverse do the same step on the brake reverse by swapping down and then you step on the brake again to park you can either not have your foot on the brake and hold down the park button and it'll park or if you're on if you're engaged in gear you can step on the brake and when the car's at a full stop you can tap it instead of holding it down then it'll park the car another trick that is useful to know is if you arrived at your location the new tesla model 3 at least the eu model doesn't have the roll option so your car actually doesn't roll or creep forward when it's at a stop it's it's stopped at a standstill so if i show you i'm on drive now i'm not stepping on the brake and the car does not roll forward which means you can actually just arrive at your parking spot uh take your seatbelt off and it automatically uh, turns the car off or puts it into park so that's another trick on how to engage park now what i want to try is enable the option that allows the car to automatically select the gear for you so that's under the car settings so if you click the car button and go under pedals and steering you can see that there's an option that says auto shift out of park and it is in beta when parked automatically shifts into drive or reverse when doors are closed driver's seatbelt is buckled and brake is pressed okay so right now i'm going to be in park again i'm going to turn this on you have to read the disclaimer, it says, you know, it'll show based on the trajectory of your current parking location, as well as information from the sensors about the current environment, blah, 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 ba basically make sure that you're checking if it's correct. So you click yes. Now, when you get in the car, instead of stepping on the brake to select gear, you literally just step to activate, and now it has automatically selected for me to drive forward. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to drive somewhere where I've backed up, and see if it still selects drive. So I did not shift anything, and now I am driving forward as you can see. So let's go park in front of someone and see if it uh, engages reverse instead. I've arrived here behind this car. I'm gonna tap park. As you can see, it says tap to activate reverse. So it already tells you what it's gonna select, which is pretty cool. So that means that it knew that the car was in front of me. So it activated reverse for me. But let me see if, if I move slightly away. Okay, so it still activates reverse. So it knows there's an obstacle in front of me, which means I don't need to shift gears. I can still override it though. So if I step on the brake, I can still shift to move forward if I want to park a bit closer. So it isn't restrictive in any way. It does have the wording that tells you what it's going to do, which is pretty useful. So 
it immediately shows you that it's, that it's in reverse. All Teslas start showing the cameras, so that's also another indication that you're reversing. But this part here is very crucial, so you'll see that it's moving you backwards. So the final thing I wanna talk about is if the screen is broken, how would you do any of these options? As I've demonstrated, you automatically shift out of park would select for you, but imagine you don't see anything here and now you've stepped on it. You obviously don't know if you're in drive or reverse. You can check your mirrors, your mirrors go down when it's in reverse, that's the default option. I think you can turn that off as well, but let's just say that that's not reliable. The other way to make sure that you're in the right gear is to use these hidden buttons up here. I couldn't actually see these when I first got the car. I had to actually look really carefully, but you can see that there's faint PRND written next to the hazard uh, button. Basically, if you hold down, you'll see that it's currently showing reverse. And if you want to change it, you can hold down D and it'll change it to drive. If you look at the screen, you can see that it's activating to drive. Let me put it back into park. You can select park over here. And let's see what happens if, oh, I think, oh, that's interesting. So if you use these buttons, it actually overrides the setting for um, the auto shift because right now it's not auto shifting for me anymore. I think it's because I've overrun using these buttons. So that's one way to activate the transmission if you are unable to use the screen. Regardless of whether the auto shift out of park is enabled or not, you can always use these buttons. These buttons don't work until you hold over one of the buttons and it'll appear and then you can see it shows all the time. It's not permanently on, it's just on for the session. I hope this video has been informative. If you have any other questions that you want to know about the Model 3, please let me know in the comments below. If there are any other cars you'd like me to review, let me know and I can compare it with a Tesla Model 3 as well. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, remember to click the like button and subscribe to continue your journey with us in the Tesla Model 3.